everyone and welcome to today's video which is part of the creative design team's youtube collaboration where we are all doing christmas tags there are two videos posting each day some have already gone before me and today julie is also posting hers and tomorrow andrea and katie are posting theirs i will put links below to all of the videos so make sure you check them out and to come back again tomorrow for the last two of the series. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing how to make a Christmas bauble shaker tag, which could also then be used as a Christmas decoration. But there's a little twist with it. It's not just a Christmas bauble shaker. It will be an opening and closing tag with some partial die cutting. So let's get straight into it. The items that I'm using today are the Circle Shaker Thin Cut Set, also the Tabs Thin Cut Set. I'm also going to use the Holiday Village Stamp Set. This does come with thin cuts, but I'm not using the thin cuts for this. I'm going to be white heat embossing, so I'll need Versamark ink and white embossing powder. I'm going to do a little bit of distressing with black soot, and then I'll be stamping the sentiment in harbour ink. And of course, we need the shaker, window foam and acetates, and some elements to put inside the shaker. I'm going to be stamping on harbour paper and first I need to prep the area with my anti-static pouch. I'm using the dark side of harbour and I don't want any of the oils from my finger or fingers or whatever's on the paper to cause the embossing powder to attach to it. I'm going to use my Misty because the image is fairly large and I want to make sure that with my Versamark it does get a good impression. I'm going to place my stamp down towards the bottom, swing over my Misty door to pick it up and then simply ink this up with Versamark ink. I've had my Misty tool for a long time and I really love it, especially when I've got large images. So I'm just going in with a second lot of Versamark just to make sure that I've got everything in place. And then I'm going to cover this with white embossing powder. And I really love how the white embossing powder looks on harbour it's it's just gorgeous the contrast in the colors so now i'll heat set that with my heat gun the next thing to do is to cut this out so that it fits inside my shaker window for the church it means that some of it will not show so i'm just going to position that so that i get as much detail as i want and if I come down too low, you'll just get the building. You won't get this steeple part here. So I'm just going to come down because the eye will tell you that this part here will go to a triangle point. Peel my washi tape off very carefully and you can see I've got my embossed building. I'll put that aside for now. And then what I need to do is prepare the tag. So I'm going to bring in my scoring tool. I have a three and a half inch piece of white daisy and I'm just going to score this at three and a half. So this is three and a half wide by 12 inches. And then I can fold this over and give it a burnish. And I'm going to do some partial die cutting with that same open circle. I'm just going to put this over the top of where the fold is and leave this section clear of the die. And then at the same time, I can cut my shaker element, which is the stitch circle to go over the top. And this way I get all the pieces for the shaker element and the back of the tag all cut in one simple run through. 
This piece from the inside, I can just save for another project. And you can see here with doing the partial die cutting, this bit is flat, but because I've put the fold in there, that will open and close to write a little message on the inside. I'm also going to distress this a little bit and deepen it. I'm going to use black soot and just go around the edges. Now I know some of this won't be seen because of this stitched element here, but I just want to deepen and give this a little bit more texture. It doesn't take very long to do. I don't have to be totally careful of blending it all in. I'm just going around the outside area. And I've got another one here that I'm going to do at the same time and bring in some gloss spray white, give it a good shake, undo the spray because I want flicks, and then I'm going to tap it to create some snow. Or it could be stars in the sky, whichever way you want to look at it. So here are the two circles that I've done. These trees are from the same stamp set and I want to create a little snow drift scene so I have cut a piece of wide cardstock with the fancy borders thin cuts. I'm not sure if these are still available and if they are, I'll link them below. But that gives a nice stitched edge which will match in with this circle stitched element. So now that this is fairly dry, I'm just going to work out where I'm going to position this because I don't want the trees to be floating. You can cut this with scissors if you don't have a stitched edge or something like this. I quite like how these look together. So basically I've put this element over the top and then I'm going to align this up and attach it with washi tape and run this through. So I just get this section here to slot inside. So you can see when I take that away, I just get this little snow drift. So I just need to put some adhesive on the back of that and then line that up. Because I don't want the trees to float. I want to see a little bit of the tree trunks and then I can peel this off because I need to use that as a layer on my shaker element. The next bit of stamping that I'm going to do is inside my little tag, I'm going to use Harbour Ink and the Merry Christmas from the Holly and Ivy card making. This is sold out. This was available September, October. The thin cuts are sold out, but you can still get the stamp set without the thin cuts. I really love this Merry Christmas sentiment. I know I'm going to use it again and again and again. So this is just going on the inside of the tag. I just love Harbour Ink. It stamps absolutely beautifully. So now I have all my pieces prepped, ready to make my shaker element. I'm going to do these at the same time. So I need the shaker window acetate and I need the shaker foam and these are really really cool because you don't just get the outside piece you get all the inside pieces to use so it's a real bonus to have all these little foam squares now I'm just running my piercing tool around the inside edge of this so this peels away easily when I apply it to my elements. I can peel off that film and then I'm going to leave that down there like that because I can see that white better against my mat and then I'm just going to attach Peel this back and then I've got all those little foam areas to use on another project. I have more than one sample to show you so hang around to the end of the video. I've used all of the Holiday Village images and then I've got another couple of clean and simple style ones if you didn't want to do the stamping. 
there is a film attached to these acetate pieces and I just put a piece of washi tape on there to peel that back. If you don't peel those off, the acetates are a little bit cloudy. So these come together really quickly once you've done all of the prep work. I'm going to use the white bitty beads and the gold star confetti. I don't want to use a whole heap and I'm just going to put a small amount in each. I don't want to cover up all the stamping and the embossing of the scenes that I've created for my shaker. A little bit too much there. And then just a few bitty bits. So that's enough in each. And when you've got a fairly busy background, you don't want to load it up too much. And then I can place my acetate circle right on top and make sure I give a very good press all the way around because I don't want anything escaping. And give it a little shake to make sure. You could put your anti-static pouch around the inside to stop things grabbing to the foam, but I quite like it when you do give them a shake and some elements are trapped. It means that when you're hanging them, you've still got some glittery, shiny things hanging around at the top. The next thing to do is to apply some liquid glass. I find this to be the easiest thing to use for my shaker windows and then put the frame on top. And then I'm just going to put some blocks on top, sorry, some stamp pads on top to have those adhere properly. The next thing to do to make these into bauble tags is I'm going to use this tabs. This is from the Thin Cut tab set. I'm going to use this tab because as soon as I saw this, I thought of bauble toppers. And it's got a little score line down the middle so that when you're using it on a layout or on other tags or cards, that will score so that it will fold over easily. So I've gone ahead and I've cut two, one from our gold foil paper and one from our gold glitter paper. Now, the reason why I'm doing this before I adhere it to this base part of the tag is that I still want this to fold. So you do need to put that on so that this area will fold back. You don't wanna do it around the whole entire tag because this section won't fold back at all. So it's just a case now of applying some liquid glass to the top area, positioning your bauble topper element and then turning it over and doing exactly the same thing on the backs. And then I've got my stamp pads on top to adhere those. And this was something that I meant to do first, but I'm going to punch a hole in these because with the gold foil, you'll notice when you punch, you do get some indentations. So if you punch that hole before you do the adhering with the gold foil, that will avoid that a little bit because it's squishing this down because of the shaker element. It doesn't happen, you don't see it with the gold glitter paper. And then it's a simple case of adhering my opening and closing tag element to my shaker element. I'm doing it from the back so that I know where the straight edge or the folded edge is going to be. And then all I have to do is attach the twine. So because I cut it into 16 inches, I'm folding it in half and then in half again. And this will go through with a little bit of encouragement. I just use my tweezers to give it a little bit of a poke to make it easier for myself. Just pull that through and feed this one through, cut this little loop off, and there we have it. So you can see now these open and close very easily because we've got the partial die cut tag piece with the folded element underneath 
our bauble topper. I'm just going to clean everything up and then I will come back in to show you some more examples. Here are the final four tags that I've made with the Holiday Village stamp set. This one here, I've used gold foil as the stitch circle overlay part. I have put a little bit too much of the beads and the stars in this one, so it does block it a little bit, but I do love how this looks with all the gold foil around it. I love how these are interactive with a little opening and closing card like element to attach to the tag and once these have been gifted you could tie that part off at the top and use them as baubles on the tree. If you didn't want to do the stamping and the embossing you can keep it really simple and clean and classic and just use cardstock and glitter paper and fill this up even more with sequins and shaker elements and that gives a really good look as well. Or you can make it out of the other shaped shaker window thin cuts that we have. I've used the star here, but you can see that I haven't used the tab element for the bauble topper as it's a little bit too big. If you wanted to, you could cut that down once you've die cut it and attach it at the top, but I thought it looked pretty just as a tag. I just wanted to mention before I go and put some still shots up at the end of this video that our 31 days of Christmas card event with the creative design team is still open for registration that will be closing on 30th of November so if you want to check out all the fabulous cards that were made there was a video each and every day and you get the bonus of a wonderful PDF booklet that you'll be able to print off and use as a guide to help create the cards but the videos of course are there with the main construction and showing how to create everything. As I said at the beginning of the video, make sure you check out all the other Creative Design Team's Christmas tag contributions to this video collab. There are some amazing tags coming your way and some have already been being posted but Andrea's and Katie's will be posting tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed watching me create these Christmas bauble tags. Happy crafting. Bye for now.